you know, your brain isn't much good to you uh, if you're not around to, uh, to use it. So what do you do if you think you or a loved one has suffered a brain injury after an automobile collision? Well, that's what we're going to ask the lawyer today. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. And my guest is attorney Alan Robertson with the Sloan Firm in Longview, Texas. Alan, I appreciate you making some time to help us out today. Thank you. Glad to be here. So uh, most people may not think about brain injury as related to uh, after a vehicle collision, but I'm guessing it happens. How, how often would you say it happens? What, uh, give us some uh, uh, your experience. It doesn't happen in every uh, car wreck, but it does happen in serious wrecks um, with enough frequency that it's something that we want to be on the lookout for it. And so we encourage our clients and our family, uh, clients' family members who have been uh, involved in a serious wreck to be on the lookout for some of the sentinel markers uh, for a brain injury so that they can seek the treatment that they need uh, to make as full of a, re of a recovery as possible. So let's talk about those markers a little bit without getting too complicated too much into, you know, we're not doctors here, but uh, uh, what are some things people should look out for? How, what are some signs that you, someone may have suffered a brain injury? The, the main sign and one of the reasons why the family often notices a brain injury uh, before uh, the, the person injured does is a, a hair trigger temper, uh, increased irritability, um, simple tasks that the person had done before with no problem or with little problem now become incredibly frustrating uh, to that person. Uh, some of our family members of, of our former clients have reported that their loved one flies off the handle at little or nothing. And so if you're seeing those types of, um, those types of symptoms, that's something that you do need to talk to your doctor uh, about so that you can be evaluated uh, appropriately and get the treatment that you need. So, Alan, is it the kind of thing that, uh, you know, someone's in a, in a, a collision, maybe they're uh, very badly hurt, they go to the hospital, is, it the, is brain injury something that doctors would normally automatically be checking for, looking out for, or is it something that you might have to really ask them to look for? Well, so I, I want to be clear. Um, in the circumstance that you described where someone seriously injured and perhaps has uh, orthopedic injuries or life-threatening injuries, heaven forbid, uh, the trauma staff and the emergency staff at, at a hospital are going to be focused on uh, those injuries first. Um, because those, you know, your brain isn't much good to you uh, if you're not around to, uh, to use it. Right. Uh, so those, those injuries typically take precedent. And usually the type of uh, brain injuries that we see, uh, a mild to moderate uh, traumatic brain injury, those, are, those injuries are typically noticed later. And they require a referral to a neuropsychologist or a neurologist uh, to be evaluated for that. Your typical trauma surgeon or orthopedic surgeon or uh, pain management physician, physical med medicine and rehabilitation doctor, uh, they're, they're typically concerned with other things and uh, you'll need to get them to refer. You need to explain these symptoms to those doctors so that you can get uh, a recommendation or a referral to the type of doctor who can assess uh, a traumatic brain injury. You mentioned early on that it's the, the family members who may notice the changes uh, more than the person who may have suffered the TBI. Uh, if they are injured, if they think they have a case, can the family members contact the attorneys on behalf of the person who was injured? Absolutely. We're happy to talk to, uh, to anybody about a, uh, a potential case. With respect to someone who uh, has suffered a brain injury for whom there's been no guardianship uh, taken out. Ultimately, it would be the, the, the patient's decision, the person injured. Uh, it would be their decision to uh, hire our law firm. Uh, but we're certainly happy to talk to uh, family members uh, to open those lines of communication between our firm 
and the person who's been injured as a result of the, the negligence of someone else. Would the amount of damages that I might be able to receive be different from an uh, uh, automobile accident, a uh, collision where there's not a TBI as opposed to when there is? is that, does that change uh, the amount of compensable damages I could receive? It often does. Typically with traumatic brain injuries, to, uh, they are such that uh, you will be dealing with them in many cases for the rest of your life. And so uh, you need to have, when, when you're called upon to resolve a case with a, a car insurance or a, an 18-wheeler uh, insurance company, you have to get all of your damages put together and it, it gets settled once and, and for all right then. So you need to have someone on your side who can look at the type of injuries and uh, bring in experts who can tell us what you'll need for, for the foreseeable future, what those things cost, and then total all those things up so that you can present your best um, uh, proposal to the insurance company so that we can ensure that you're taken care of for the rest of your life for injuries that were caused by the negligence of someone else. It sounds like, too, uh, Alan, that you, you want to have an attorney who has experience in the uh, traumatic brain injury uh, field, not, not someone who's never ha done that before. You absolutely do. Um, experience helps you know what to look for. Uh, it helps you know how to evaluate uh, whether bringing in the types of experts and, and not to put too fine a point on it, bringing in the expense associated with those experts will ultimately pay off at the, at the end of the day. Those sorts of things are just judgment calls. And the best way to have good judgment is to have experience with that. Uh, John Sloan and, and Ray Hatcher and everyone here at the, at the Sloan firm, uh, has been doing, uh, brain injury cases for decades. So uh, we're happy to help and we stand ready to, uh, to help families uh, put their lives back together after a serious motor vehicle collision. Let's talk about the cost just for a second though, Alan. You, you mentioned uh, experts and uh, all that sort of thing, the investigation, that's, that's uh, not cheap. Do people need to be prepared to come up with money out of pocket up front uh, if they hired your firm to handle this kind of case? Absolutely not. We take all of our personal injury cases on contingency fees and we advance uh, the costs of investigating and retaining experts um, until that case resolves, whether by settlement, by trial, uh, on appeal, however that case resolves. Um, if we don't recover anything for you, you don't owe us anything and we eat those costs. We ask only that if we recover uh, something for you, that you pay our fee from that recovery and you reimburse us dollar for dollar for those costs. Uh, lots of great information as usual, Alan. Thank you so much for making some time and helping us out today. Happy to do it. Thank you. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Alan Robertson uh, with the Sloan Firm in Texas. Remember, if you want the best information or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com. Also, please take a sec to like, share, and subscribe by clicking below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com.